Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about Dorian, now Hurricane Dorian. We did talk about the possibility for it to become a hurricane possibly, especially if it misses Dominican Republic because of those tall mountains, and it did end up missing Dominican Republic, which was worst case scenario. That ended up happening, and now next step is the Bahamas, and then eventually Florida. We're going to talk about all of that during this video, but before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for my social medias on the Instagram and and on the Facebook page, we've been doing a lot of updates, so I would go ahead and follow those uh, if you wanted to get some nowcast type forecasts, because I have been posting a lot of updates about this storm on those two different pages. Now, we are looking at current satellite imagery from this one. Now, the really unique thing with this one is we're seeing, we're able to see radar first off from Puerto Rico. We have radar data from Puerto Rico, so we are able to see rad radar data from this one where it is right now. And for the last time, we're going to be able to see radar data probably for the next three or four days until we're able to see some radar, possibly in the Bahamas, but at least in Florida once it starts to head towards Florida. Looking at satellite imagery, it does look like a Category 1 hurricane. Obviously, it is a Category 1 hurricane, so it should look like a Category 1 hurricane, but this one's got some nice spin to it. It is a smaller size storm, which does not by any means mean weaker. It's just smaller in scale. So really, uh, the, the areas that are going to be getting wind from this one is going to be a smaller area, but it could be more potent just because it's so compact. Now, we are going to move on to looking at radar for this one. Now, it's, it's very beautiful to be able to see the spin in this one, obviously. It, it looks so beautiful. As we see that eye starting to develop on radar, it hasn't developed on satellite yet, but we do see that eye on radar as... We do zoom in a few times here where you can see uh, really up close up against those eye walls that are just starting to develop. And obviously over the next few days as this one intensifies, we will start to see that eye wall develop much, much more. Just super fascinating to look at it on radar, especially to me. I'm a huge weather nerd, so I love seeing stuff like this. And every storm's unique, you know. I was talking in a Facebook group, not the one that's mine, but a different Facebook group earlier. And I just... it. I reminded myself why I love weather so much, and that's just because every single storm is so unique, and these storms pose a different threat every time and a, a different obstacle you have to face as a forecaster to figure out all of the different components into a forecast, and that's just the stuff that makes me fall in love with weather. Now, enough with that. We are looking at spaghetti models here, and you can see almost all of them have it hitting central Florida, the east coast of central Florida, Some there, somewhere there along the coast, somewhere near Daytona or south of there. Now, we also have a few of them that curve north. I don't know how likely this outcome is. I don't think it's very likely at all just because of the upper air pattern we have right now. It seems very, very likely that this one is going to make impact somewhere in between Miami and Jacksonville. That's kind of what I'm sticking with at this point. Um, I think it's very, very unlikely that it curves north into the Carolinas. Everything's possible, but I, I really just do not see that as a very likely outcome at this point. I think Florida should be starting to keep their eye on this one and start preparing in the coming days if it still looks like it's going to make impact. As we narrow down our cone of uncertainty, to where in Florida this one's going to hit. We will have to keep an eye on that. Now, we are looking at our GFS ensemble model. This one is all over the place. These ensemble models cannot get it together. All the all the normal models seem to have a general idea of what's going to happen here. The ensemble models are all over the place. Now, you can see the GFS model ensemble model looks like you just you can't even tell where it wants to go with it because they're just everywhere. All of these are individual model runs within the, the ensemble. And we have that mean average black line, which you can see is in southern coastal Florida there. But we're going to wait and see where this, if this one wants to settle down. But still, a majority of them have it hitting Florida. The interesting thing is after it hits Florida on this model, you can see it does enter the Gulf and eventually then re-enter the United States uh, via a Gulf state there at some point, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, somewhere like that. I don't, I don't think we can start talking about this sort of uh, outcome yet just because Florida is already five days out. Anything beyond that is kind of crazy to talk about as far as tropics are concerned. Uh, you can see here the JEPS model, which is our Canadian ensemble model, likes to take this one all over the place as well. We, we can't even do anything with this information. Now, here's your intensity guidance according to the models. You can see 
a big, big, big majority of them have it getting over category two status. You can see this is from 12Z, so this is pretty long ago when we weren't even a category one hurricane yet. I'm assuming that in our next model update, we will see a lot more bringing it into category three and four. My personal thoughts for this one, I think that as you're gonna see from NOAA's official forecast, this is very unfortunate news to be telling you guys, but I think that at least we will see a category three here. I think that category four or category five cannot be uh, rolled out at this point. This reminds me a lot of the setup we had with Michael. Obviously, it's a very different location from Hurricane Michael, but very, very, very similar setup with limited amounts of shear, limited amounts of dry air. Uh, I think this the sky's the limit with this one. Uh, again, category three as a minimum. Uh, it looks like we'll even have a category three at landfall, according to NOAA. I think it's very, very likely that we reach Category 4 status at some point, and I would say there's about a 50% chance we reach Category 5 status at some point during this storm's life. Uh, obviously, that's very bad news because Category 5 hurricanes in the Atlantic aren't very common, and this is very bad news, but this one setup is very favorable of a very strong hurricane. Now, here's NOAA's official forecast. You can see we're officially a hurricane. Here, this is as of the 2 p.m. update. It's 3.55 as I'm recording this. So here's your current NOAA forecast as of 2 p.m. Hurricane all the way through until it reaches Florida. As it continues to intensify, it becomes a major hurricane by Sunday morning. And then by Monday morning, it's hitting Florida as a major hurricane, according to the NOAA forecast. Very, very bad news here. Again, right now they're calling for a Category 3 hurricane, but I think... Uh, category four is also pretty likely to be reached. Now, here's your probability as of right now of tropical storm force winds. Obviously, as we reach Florida, as we get closer to the storm making impact, the likelihood is going to go further and further up. But since we're so far away, they're not very certain whether it's going to hit, you know, southern Georgia or if it's going to hit southern Florida. So they keep the un they keep it the certainty pretty low here. But we do see those reds enter Florida, which means we're already at about 70 to 80 percent chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. And we're five days out. So that's that that's pretty insane. Uh, now, hurricane force winds, we're already at 20 to 30 percent chance of seeing hurricane force winds in coastal Florida. Again, just insane to think of that five days out. We already have that high of a probability coming from NOAA. Uh, and I'm assuming tomorrow we'll have a 30 to 50% chance there as we'll see that yellow and orange move further and further west. Now, here's the times of the winds arriving to uh, Florida. You can see Sunday morning is likely when tropical storm force winds are going to reach coastal Florida. And then they will be reaching some of those panhandle areas by Sunday night uh, as this storm starts to enter you know, central Florida and then back into the Gulf likely. So that's the timing with all that. Now, I just wanted to show where the different models have this one reaching Florida and making impact. You can see the GFS right now has this one just somewhere south of Jacksonville. I believe this is probably somewhere in between Jacksonville and Daytona. This one has it hitting a, as a 969 millibar hurricane with, this is in knots. So we have, it looks like easily 65 knot winds which I believe is you know well over hurricane status, probably still category two or three at that point. Here's your CF CMC model, and you can see it has it hitting somewhere in between Miami and Daytona, so somewhere on those beaches down there. Beautiful area, by the way. Uh, we do have this one hitting here on the CMC. Then on the Icon model, we have it hitting somewhere near Miami as a six or a 967 millibar low pressure system. So what I'm trying to get at here is that this one can hit anywhere in Florida. The models have this one hitting anywhere from Jacksonville all the way down to Miami. So we're going to need to get a lot closer to when this one's making impact to see, to have any certainty of where in Florida this one's going to hit. But right now, the chance of this one hitting Florida is probably over 90% chance of this one making direct impact somewhere in Florida. Now here's your HWRF model. This one's known for overdoing it. As you can see, it has a... 940 milli, uh, millibar low pressure system, which is it's insanely low pressure with over 110 knot winds. I think this one's overdoing it. Um, and this model is known for that. So it's safe to say it probably is overdoing it. Now, here's my official forecast for Hurricane Dorian. You can see we're at category one status and it's located just 
to the east of Puerto Rico. Now, I want you to look to the right of the screen here at this black uh, area here where we have the location, strength, and track. We're at 18.3 degrees north by 65 degrees west. We have 75 mile per hour winds with a low pressure center of 997 millibars. Movement is northwest at 13 miles per hour. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see my track here. Again, we're going to see this one move northwest and slowly start to head directly west as we head just to the north of the Bahamas. And then we're going to see this one make impact anywhere from Miami um, all the way up to Savannah, Georgia. Though, again, I think a Florida impact is very, very much more likely than a Georgia impact. It is very slightly possible that it would hit Georgia instead of Florida. But at this point, somewhere in coastal Florida, again, probably an 85 to 90 percent chance that we do see this one actually hit Florida directly somewhere along that coast. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're going to stay safe if you do live in Florida. I'm expecting a lot of people from Florida to watch this one. So, again, just please stay up to date with the updates with this one. Not only my updates, but with Noah's official updates. And just heed all the warnings and advice that they give you on this one. I will be making update videos on this one in the coming days. Obviously, within the next five days, there will probably be two or more updates on this storm. As this is the obviously the biggest thing going on in the United States as far as weather is concerned right now. So we're going to need to continue to update you guys. Again, just stay safe and uh, stay tuned to the channel for updates and stay tuned to Noah. That's most important. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.